Ed here, how you going? Episode two of our little sustainable bites segment and welcome into uh, Northern New South Wales, Bundjalung country home. I'm in uh, lockdown at the moment, so I've been working from home and, and today filming a little segment from home for you. Ah, uh, gee, it gives me a, a much better understanding of how you Victorian people and, and oh, Sydney as well going through this for extended periods. So Look, must be so hard not being able to connect with your kids and your families. So really feeling for you guys and, and hopefully, fingers crossed, South East Queensland will be back up and rolling here. Um, today's episode is going to focus in on the where to from here and also, I suppose, just trying to give you the heads up on some of the hurdles you might not see coming down the line. Hopefully you've got your little project and you're inspired and, and that's why you're here reading this fantastic journal and, and taking the time to watch this little video. So... I'll try and move through um, fairly quickly today um, and just stop at some key points. I think the first one that's really important to touch on is before we get involved in any of these really big projects is to just take a step back and remember the education for sustainability kind of mindset in that we're not trying to get kids to a, a, a linear point in time where they're like, okay, there it is and they, and they understand that or we've stopped straws and yeah. We're working towards kids having uh, an understanding of the ever-evolving process of sustainability and the, and the systems in place that need revising and they need changing and that kids need to be involved in those systems. So just making sure that what you're unpacking isn't going to be something that you're going to be hitching onto your back and you're going to be carrying every afternoon at school. It needs to be something that's simple enough that kids can be involved in if you do want this to be a school-wide project. Okay, so just check in with yourself on that. Um, once you've got your project in mind, make sure that your kids get in there and get dirty with it. This knowledge-centred, classroom-based approach that uh, a crammed curriculum encourages us to stay inside of is, is not the opportunity for kids to ask questions uh, and get their hands in and see how things change over time. We sort of from one point to the next and, and like I mentioned in this linear approach where we're trying to get them to a point where they understand this piece of knowledge so then they can move on to the next year and so on. And, and I suppose we forget sometimes that education is as much about the journey as it is about the destination and, and what kids pick up along the way in terms of their self-esteem, uh, their passion and hopefully their purpose are what's going to inspire them to continue in education. It's going to facilitate them reading more when they are engaged with what their passion is. So let's allow the kids to get involved in that sense and, and I suppose also have that empathetic view that not every kid's going to want to get their hands in the compost. I certainly know not every teacher does. Um, even I don't half the time, but, but we get it done. So just taking that approach there. But let the kids get in and get their hands dirty on whatever the environmental or social project is that you're trying to unpack at your school. For us, as, as I mentioned previously, we did a, a big waste audit over the course of a week and I was looking back at the video before I filmed this of, of the kids putting together interviews while they did it, which I think is a really important thing to do is to allow uh, the kids a voice in that as well and also the photographic evidence for when you are trying to share it with other teachers and the community is important. But I was listening back and, and, the, and the shock and frustration, uh, and you know, that raw honesty from kids is beautiful. And when you do capture that on film, it was really quite moving. So I think um, an important thing to remember is documenting your process along the way. And once you've got that impassioned group of kids there and hopefully a few capable adults around you as well that want to get involved, it's starting to then think well ahead not too far ahead, but well ahead in terms of, okay, let's not bite off more than we can chew. Got to do your what, where, when, how, and why. Really sit down and unpack that with the kids. Uh, it, it's such a big um, problem trying to look into overall systems and sustainability in school that you really need to just pull apart one small area, um, whatever your focus is, and I think try, try your best to prove the value of what you're doing in that one small area before you take on other projects rather than trying to grab the whole thing at once. Okay, so for us it was waste. For you it might be water, it might be solar, whatever it is your school's looking at, fantastic. But just start in that one small area. So you're there, you've got your kids are involved. Hopefully you've got some environmental leaders and some, and some senior environmental students that might like to get involved in a committee with your teachers or with other staff members. 
and you've decided we're going to uh, minimize food scraps going into landfill. So what do we need? Where's it gonna go? Important, I think also, how long do we wanna trial this and when are we gonna revisit it? I, I would recommend um, with the compost, keeping right on top of it. It's the type of thing that if you do let it go, it get, as you know, it gets pretty, pretty gross pretty quick. So how are we gonna manage that? And for the students, that big overarching question, the big one behind it is why are we doing this? Their answer probably will be, well, we've got way too much compost. We want to change that. And, and that's fantastic. And your overarching thing, hopefully, is I want kids to understand that they can set up systems and they can feel empowered and to follow their passions and thus enabling them to take that home to their families. And here's where we start to have behavioural change. We have such a privilege to work with young people and start to instill behavioural change from a young age. And this is an opportunity not just to minimise the amount of waste going into landfill, but to multiply that out by allowing kids to be able to go, ah, that's why and that's how, and why am I not doing that at home? So get it set up in that way. Um, big barrier, excuse me, big barrier will be staff and cleaning teams that don't want change. And I think it's important to understand if someone came and tried to change something you weren't passionate about, you'd probably put your barrier up too. And that's where it's really important to come from a kid's voice on it. Not you directing other staff, but a kid's voice on, this is this project we're doing, and miss, can you please help? Or going to the principal and saying, we're really passionate about this. And teacher and principal that's gonna turn down kids that are really passionate in the middle of a project. I, I don't know, you might never change that person. But making sure you got your other staff feeling like they're involved in the decision-making process, but again, going through those kids. So always consulting when you're thinking about going to a new bin system at school, remembering that your cleaning team are there day in, day out, and if you go and change there every day, they're going to be upset if there's no consultation. So you need to go through admin. This is a, probably after you've done your trial and you've got your evidence. You go to admin and you say, hey, here's this much that's happening in our school and here's what we can do about it. Here's our plan, and you've got to be thorough. Principals are extremely busy. You've got to go in thorough. Don't go in saying, you know, we just want to get rid of this one thing and it's going to be great. You need to have your plan there, okay? Get the respect. Then, once you've got them on board, really important to have that consultation process where teachers feel like they have a say, give them a couple options, but working with your cleaning team as well if you're certainly going into a bin change because they're the people with the know-how and they're the people who are going to be handling it day in, day out, so they need to be happy as well. Pardon me. All right, so we've got our project, we've got people on board, we've established our working group, we've consulted, awesome. Hopefully you've gotten to the point there where you've got some great feedback that you can give into your school community and you're getting that buy-in from parents and families. Assemblies, newsletters, Facebook, be present, whether it be year level awards for the Green Award, um, during the week. Keep that momentum moving by being front and centre. You there in your committee and the kids will see what's happening, but you've got to remember people outside are so busy with their own things that are going on that if you're not there ever present updating on how it's going, people will forget and become frustrated. Why, why do I have to have three bins in my room? Or why can't I just have back my big landfill bin? Where am I meant to put it all? You know, we... We fight these challenges all the time. Um, and I suppose, again, trying to be respectful and understanding of where those people's perspectives are coming from is really important. All right, so you're ready to go. Don't rush yourself, take your time. And remember, it's student driven because we're educating for sustainability. Let the kids be involved, let them make the mistakes with you. Go along that journey, but just be prepared for your hurdles along the way. Work with your staff, work with your cleaning team, work with your admin, and don't buy it off too much too early, okay, because it is a long race. And once you've got yourself set in that one area, you'll be amazed when you open up that committee to other people wanting to bring in their own passions. Before you know it, you'll be container recycling, you'll be collecting flat batteries, there'll be bread tie, there'll be lids for kids, you'll be all over the place and it'll all be happening, but you'll have your team around you and you've taken your time and got your community support there. All right, guys, all the best with it. Looking forward to catching up again soon.
Take care.